Okay, so I've made a single recording on this audio track, and the next thing I want to talk about is when you record on a track, you get one of these regions with a waveform on it, right? Now, what are these regions? Right. What I'm going to explain to you now is the same for Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, Sonar, Ableton, every single audio sequencer out there, because all the audio sequencers use this technique called non-destructive audio editing. These regions that you get on tracks with the waveform on when you record on a track, right? This region, it's not the file on the disk. This region is simply a graphic reference which tells Logic when to play a particular section of the actual audio file that's living on the hard disk that you've recorded. Okay? So, um, let me close the Inspector column for a moment to do this. And then I'm going to open the Project Media here. Now, when you record onto tracks, all your recordings build up in this Project Media column. Let's bring this out a bit. So, I've made one recording on this track. And if I, there's the recording. And if I compact it, I hide the region information for that file. So this is the name of the recording I made on the track. Test, 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 one hash oh one. Then there's the information about the file. It's 44.1 sample rate. It's 24 bit. The single circle there means it's a mono recording on a mono track, right? If it was a stereo recording on a stereo track, there'd be a pair of overlapping circles there. That's the size of the file on the disc. That's the project tempo that was set when the recording was made. And then with this file selected, above I see the file path on the USB 3 My Book in the pro folder AAA Logic Audio and the title of the file. Now if we then open out, uncompact this file information, we get this new thing underneath. And this is the region information for the region here on the track. Okay, and you'll notice that there's the whole length of the file, but only some of it is covered in blue. And the blue represents the blue section here on the track. Right? Now I started recording at bar one and recorded until just past bar five. But if you look here, you'll see that there is some grey audio file before the beginning of the blue bit. So the blue bit represents the region here. But there's actually some extra recording before. And that's because when you're recording in Logic, Logic actually records over the counting as it's counting down to the record. So if I bring this region back this way and extend it out as far as I can at the front, we can see there's a whole extra bar of silence there where I didn't sing here, right? But it was recording. And then there's a little bit of extra at the end, so if I drag the end of the region out, it's now I've set this blue region, I've dragged it fully out at the front and fully out at the back, so now this region covers the entire length of the file on the disk. This region now represents the entire length of the file that was recorded on the disk. So if I position it at bar 3, then when the playhead comes along, this graphic block tells Logic when the playhead arrives at bar 3, begin playing the file on the disk that this region represents and begin playing it right at the start of the file and play it all the way through to the very end of the file. Okay? But if I shorten the region, let's bring the front in like that and the back in, now I'm, I've reduced the region, so it's only covering this one bar in the middle of the file somewhere. And look at the blue section here on top of the whole grey file. Now I've shortened this region by bringing in the front and bringing in the back. So now this blue region represents just that section of the file in the middle of the whole overall file recorded on the disk, the grey bit. And if I position it at bar 4, then that means that when the playhead comes along, 
this region, this graphic reference block, tells Logic, at this point, bar 4, begin playing this section of the audio file living on the disk, and only that section of it in the middle. OK, so these regions are just non-destructive graphic blocks representing either all of the length of the file or some of the length of the file on the disk. OK. Let me show you this uh, just one more time, but in a different edit situation, a different viewpoint. Now, um, in your main preferences for logic, in advanced, you should have advanced tools ticked, which puts logic into its advanced mode. But also, you want to have advanced audio and advanced editing ticked. Now, when we double-click on this region to open it in the editor below here, and logic, oh, there it is. OK, now that we've ticked advanced audio, when we open an audio region in the editor, we get track edit and file edit. Now, track edit is simply a bigger version of the region on the track. This is the same as this, but this is just a bigger one down here in its own dedicated edit window. So the idea of this track edit, which should really be called region edit, is that normally when you're working on your project, your tracks will probably be zoomed something like that. So you want to edit this region, you double click, open it in the editor, and you get a nice big version of it to work on here without having to zoom in. But this region is the same as this region. This is just a bigger copy. But with advanced audio ticked, we now have the file edit. And the file edit, which Apple tries to hide from you, this is the actual file on the disk. If you mess with this in the file edit, you are corrupting the actual file on the disk. But this is just the region, a graphic representation of a section of the file on the disk. So if we look in the file edit here, this blue region at the moment, we can see it represents that section of the file. So again, when the playhead arrives at bar 4, because this region is positioned at bar 4, when the playhead arrives at bar 4, this graphic reference block, this region, tells Logic, when the playhead arrives at bar 4, play that section of the file on the disk, and only that section. But if I change... Let's change to a different part of the audio. Let's go have that bit from there to there, like that. So now I've changed the region. And now the blue region on the track represents this section of the audio file on the disk. So if I were to position it at bar 6, and then when the player comes along, this graphic region block tells Logic at bar 6 begin playing back this section of the file living on the disk. Yeah. Or if I drag it fully out at the front and fully out at the back, now this region represents the entire length of the file on the disk. And if I position it at bar 4, when the player comes along, this graphic region, this reference is now telling logic at bar 4, begin playing the file on the disk starting right at the beginning and play all the way through to the end of the file. So these regions are simply just graphic reference blocks that tell logic where to play a particular section of a file living on the disk, but they are not the actual file. OK? So we can do anything we want with them because we're not ever affecting the file on the disk. These are just references to sections of the file on the disk, or all of the file on the disk. So I've dragged it out to full length now, the region. So now it represents the whole file on the disk. I can now cut it in half. But I'm not cutting the file on the disk in half. I'm just cutting the reference block in half. So now I've chopped it in half. This region represents the file from the beginning until that point. And then this region represents the file from this point all the way through to the end. And if I position them at these positions, then at bar 3, this block tells Logic, begin playing the file on the disk at the beginning all the way through to that point. And then the player reaches this block at bar 8, and this region block, this reference block, tells Logic at bar 8, now play the same file, but from this point through till the end. 
and you can you know change the order that they're in as well okay let's um, change their order so they're back to front now this block here which represents the end half of the file is in front of this block which represents the beginning half of the file but again they're just references that tell logic what to play where at bar 2 this block says play the file from this position along its length till the end and then at bar 5 this block says play the file from the beginning till halfway down its length so it's all that's all these are that's what non-destructive editing is these are just graphic references telling logic which part of a file to play when okay we go back and look in our project media now I've cut chopped this region in half under the actual file I've got the first original region covering the whole length of the file this region represents the whole of the file then below that are the two halves that I chopped that region there represents the first half of the file and that region represents the second half of the file. Okay, And if I was to alt drag a copy of that one off, now I've got two blocks here and here, here and here. Both those blocks represent the same second half of the file on the disk. So all that means is I've just copied that block over, that reference. So when the player reaches bar 9, it will play the second half of the file from somewhere in the middle to the end. And then when the player reaches bar 12, it'll play the same half of the file through till the end again. So you understand it now? These are just graphic reference blocks. That is non-destructive editing. We can chop these, shorten them, lengthen them, move them around, copy them. And all they are is references to sections of the file on the disk. Okay? All right. So that's what non-destructive editing regions are.